Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Queen in Middle School for Life. Well, as a train comes by, we can hear the horn. It is 23 hours and 3 minutes into the 6th day of October 2021, and we are doing a transitions video. We're doing another tran transition. We're outside, obviously, <laughs> uh, doing our observation work. Uh, I set the camera up, so and I did a, uh, without the light on, I did the sort of uh, the framing. I think I've got everything just about right. <laughs> it's always difficult. But anyways, uh, all the research desks now are fully functional. I have three research desks now. I have one where the observatory is. I have one that's the media room, so that's the media room, media room research desk. And now there's out here. And it's fully functional. I was listening to Lionel out here. He's uh, going through his broadcast. If you want to do good analysis, if you want to do a good analysis, you have to watch something more than once. And then, a matter of fact, it's going to take you a couple of years uh, to really pin down some of the analysis, some of the points in the analysis. Because it's about observation. It's not necessarily about theory. Theory is all, 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 all well and good, but there is a difference between theory and reality. And this is, a, you know, a person who comes up to Lionel and says, okay, I studied law. I know all about law, but he doesn't have the years of experience that, uh, that Lionel has. That Lionel, you know, but understandably say, well, I'll, I'll clean your clock then. Why? Because there's a difference between theory and reality. There's a difference between someone who practices law and a person who sort of understands the theoretics, even though the, per the, person, the person may be a professor. If a person like say, a professor at law, uh, but has never been in the courtroom themselves, then they don't understand the courtroom. And uh, this is where they make, in many cases, make a lot of mistakes because uh, they'll make pronouncements based on their theory and understanding and take the assumption that they know because, well, look at who I am. Here are my credentials. Well, the credentials, as well as the back, as, as, as well as the background, really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your credentials are. Reality matters, and this is this is if you're going to work in the world of reality. But the problem today is we're living in a holographic universe. Well, this was brought up by uh, Stephen Hawking, and he said, "Oh, we don't have a real universe. It's a holographic universe." Uh, a large chunk of Hinduism is based on that, the illusion of reality. And that we live in a world of, uh, not necessarily morality, but of, of positive and negative. You know, positive and, neg positive and negative energy. So, uh, no need to worry about this or that as long as it's not negative and, you know, and then you're all right. But, well, there's something more to it th than that. Uh, again, what happens is that he just, Lionel describes his shift from thinking of that of a libertarian and in many, in many cases that out of a, a Bernie Sanders supporter a Bernie a Bernie Sanders Democrat uh, to more of a Trump supporter uh, and not that he is actually a Trump supporter he is but again this is not a typical you can't with Trump you can't label someone typically Republican simply because they support Trump Trump has a number of supporters who aren't specifically Republican. A large, a large chunk of his support, particularly when he won in uh, in, uh, in uh, 2016, had nothing to do with the Republicans. It had to do with that he had an enormous amount of in, an enormous amount of independent support. And the thing is that the people who who don't like Trump simply just don't like Trump. There's no particular reason for it. And this is what Lionel sort of explains. And you talk to them, and you ask to, to give specifics, and they really can't give you specifics. They'll give you again. Oh, I heard this, and I heard that. Oh, don't you know? Because I heard from very reliable sources, and you know, but there is no real sort of, if you will, smoking gun. There is no real evidence uh, that you have. Uh, this uh, reason not to like Trump in terms of being a pre being a good president. There are often concerns. The question is, is that uh, does he have leanings? Does he have biases? 
that could cause a lot of problem, a lot of problems for the United States. And the answer is yes, he does. The conservatives seem to be fixated on this whole thing with China, but China is not is not the real issue right now. What's going on is it's a war back and forth between uh, the Chinese banking system and the Rothschild banking system. And the Rothschild banking system is a real one. I say why? Why is it real? Because it go back to the Holy Roman Empire. If you look at the Holy Roman Empire, they had their bankers. And because the Roman Pope papacy decided from the Christian context that, uh, you know, uh, Christians couldn't handle money, they couldn't be neither a borrower nor a lender be, uh, I'm quoting that from the Gospel, or I think from uh, Leviticus, I can't remember exactly where, but anyways, the point is, is that they uh, hired uh, the Jews to do the work for them. And so as long as there was this middleman uh, to do the actual work, uh, and they didn't sully their hands at uh, dealing with finances, and there was no particular issue. This is why you have accounting firms and uh, all these sort of money changers and so on and so forth. It's because uh, the, the, the the powers that be, the aristocracy, didn't handle their own finances. They still don't. And this was the creation, this was the evolution of the uh, Rothschild banking system. It's, so it's an old system. It's not something new. And they've managed their finances in, in, in a... In a fundamental matter, where it's all about making money, no matter whose side, no matter which side wins, so it doesn't matter. They don't choose the side; they simply exist within the equation itself. And this, this is something that's difficult to understand because it's, it's, it's not obviously, it's not obvious. You have to go back and do a bit of history. You have to do the history of physics, to understand this. The history of physics contains a lot of characters who were who crossed over into a number of different worlds. And as these worlds sort of merge together or have these sort of um, cross-indexing type of things uh, where they sort of reference each other or have parallel connections or in, in many cases interconnected to some degree, uh, you begin to understand this, you begin to see this, and it becomes an issue that you can start now put your hands on even if just a little bit. Wrap your mind around it, so. Anyways, that's it for the transition out here. Uh, we'll be back inside uh, within about two hours and continue from there on out. Well, it is seven hours and 29 minutes into the eighth day of October 2021. I just finished having breakfast. Uh, uh was on the YouTube stroll. It is, we got this around the eighth. This is when I pay all my bills. I got all my bills paid. And make the new orders, and that's what I've done. So all the new orders are in, all the bills are paid, and we are moving along. I have also had a second successful day of bringing down information from uh, the new observatory. Uh, we had to upgrade because there were some issues with the uh, how the downloads were actually occurring. So uh, rather than um, Simply junk everything and, 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 and start all over again uh, with a new system. Uh, I was able to get in there with Linux and fix up some of the code, fix up some of the uh, the software on there, and bring it back to life again. So uh, it's the uh, in terms of the cost, at least costly, uh, uh, and solution to the problem. And we'll have our second sexual day of bringing down the information uh, and taking a look at what's going on in the atmosphere in terms of the atmospheric physics. So, anyways, uh, I think I'm just going to leave that here for now because we are going to be going outside. We are going to be doing observation tonight. I didn't do it last night. There was no observation last night simply because I'm just way too tired. Uh, I didn't finish with resolving some of a large chunk of the problems uh, that began Wednesday night. Uh, I didn't solve the problems until uh, 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the afternoon on Thursday. I was on the 7th, so it was yesterday. Uh, and I mean real yesterday. <laughs> when I got, not, not when I, uh, before I got up because I went to bed. I went to bed today around 6 o'clock in the morning. This is where, where a large chunk of the problem comes in is that Sometimes I'm going to bed noon. Sometimes I'm going to bed six a.m. That's where my that's where my days are, and so it's it's very difficult to sort of maintain a uh, understanding of what day it is and what whether yesterday or today or whatever. 
uh, when you're uh, going to bed and getting up on the same day. So that's what you end up getting lost. Anyways, uh, I think that's going to be here, and I will see you uh, outside for the transitions vlog. Well, it's 23 hours and 19 minutes into the eighth day of, uh, uh, let's see, yeah, I'm right, eighth day of September, no, of October 2021, and we're outside doing our observational work. This is not the observation vlog, though. The observation vlog will replace the, uh, our life on the road, uh, until April, uh, and then we'll go back to our life on the road when we're back on the road again. Right now... We're off the road, so um, the observation vlog will sort of re replace everything uh, when the we've, when I finished uploading the uh, uh, when I finished uploading everything. So it's about another two weeks worth of uploading before uh, we get to the observation vlog. Anyways, I'm one of the things that you're doing when you're outside like this is you you're using not only your eyes but more often than not you're using your ears. So there is an audio component to the observation as well, and uh, it helps to understand, and actually helps you understand uh, acoustical physics better uh, by sitting on because you can hear the waveguide, you can hear uh, when you look at different nodes along a, uh, a sound wave, you can see what's going on with it, you can hear what's going on with it. Going on with it. And this makes a, a fundamental difference in terms of how things, uh, how how your understanding shapes up about between what we call static physics or static science, which is all done within the laboratory, and how le how the reality, the dynamics of physics actually works out when you're in the real environment. This is not a clean environment. There's a lot of other uh, sounds that interfere. Uh, there's a number of issues that you sort of have to deal with. Let me see if I got this right. I should have done. I should have done a, uh, a test without the uh, without the lamp on. Uh, when the lamp is on, I can't see the screen. It's all sort of uh, grayed out, and provides it. So the phone itself is actually providing a light, uh, and when it's like that, it, the whole screen comes whited out, and you're getting the. Um, sort of the, the background effect, uh, you're getting the lighting effect of the white screen uh, in the video, and so this is why you're seeing what you're seeing as you're seeing it. Uh, anyways, uh, I think Lionel took the day off today. It is, uh, it'll be in the, uh, the uh, Columbus Day weekend, so I think he probably took the day off, uh, took, took the day off and sort of went uh, driving around. That's what he usually does. He usually goes driving around. But uh, that's neither here nor there. I've been watching him on Twitter. I've been sort of following him on Twitter. He's really not, he, he's kind of stuck right now. He's not doing anything really new. Um, in terms of the CVD, there were other sources there I have on Twitter. These are biotech sources. These are medical science uh, sources. These are virology sources. Uh, I, I view everything, virology, uh, biochemistry, biophysics, uh, biotech, I view all of this stuff as, as forms of organic chemistry because that's what they are. All of your biology stuff, all of this, even your medicine are forms of organic chemistry. And so I take the perspective of, of an organic chemist rather than as and, and, and a cyberneticist. The cyberneticist, and this is why you have cyborg alpha, is the study of uh, the human being as a model to sort of create your robots, your, me your mechanical aspect of things. And so you have to look at the mechanisms, mechanisms of how the body works in order, in, in order to uh, properly replicate, replicate it. In, in, and so what happens is that the android becomes the model, your model, of how you think a human being, from, based on your observation, actually functions. And so you have to look at all the different components, all, all the different things that have to be sort of brought in together. Uh, and it, it is in an entirely different perspective than most doctors, uh, the, the MDs, will look at things. There is a large overlap between the two, but they are not the same. Uh, the MD is primarily there from the from the, from the patient's perspective to their result to resolve problems. 
but a researcher, particularly on the cyberneticist, you understand the same mechanisms, uh, but you want to understand how they work, how you can repair them, how you can readjust the whole system uh, without shutting everything down. And so this is kind of what you want. And you don't get this with uh, Lyme. You get this only uh, with someone looking at the sort of the technical aspect of things. Eh. So it's neither here nor there. Uh, I've done all the rest of the shopping I need to do. And so now it's time to transition back. I've been about a half hour, 45 minutes. I'll be going back inside again to resume the rest of my day. Well, I'm waiting for delivery from Amazon. It is <clears throat> 12 hours and 47 minutes into the ninth day of October 2021. <clears throat> I've had just about six hours worth of sleep, but still not enough. I typically don't sleep... Um, Calmly, so it's like a, it's like doing uh, exercise or a workout while I'm sleeping. So when I get up, I'm still tired. But again, when you get up, you're still pretty groggy anyway. So you, you think it's a while to sort of clear your mind, clear your head of the cobwebs, and so on and so forth before you start f having some degree of functionality again. But of course. <clears throat> This is the nature of transition anyways, right? So, you don't always uh, get up right away and go from one point. The next point is always after a period of, a uh, prolonged period of uh, work at one particular area that you, uh, the transition is, isn't instant. There is a migration in the transition, but not necessarily something that's instantaneous. Uh, anyways, I was watching uh, uh, Ali and the uh, Yali vlogs last night. Yeah, well, yeah, it was, was kind of last night. <laughs> it feels like last night, but it was around 2 o'clock in the morning when it finally came in. Well, I had something to eat and then uh, started on the, the YouTube stroke. I'm having a hard time keeping my eyes open, so excuse me for that. And Allie seems to be in better spirits, but the thing is, I, I think she's kind of taken the whole thing that, uh, at least by the Disney process of itself, she's not going to be a Disney princess. But as I said before, that doesn't necessarily matter. I mean, there's a lot of road bumps in your way. If you want to be something, really determined to be something then there are always alternative routes to going where you need to go. Uh, uh, so she's taken down and sort of lost all the called standard opportunities, the, the, the typical paths. Now she has to consider the alternative path. And then this is particularly uh, one that she is already fully, pretty well planted, and that is YouTube. Um, she starts with the Ali Vlogs, the Tannerites, and... Uh, she has her own channel, channel Alley the Rose, and there's no reason why she can't grow that into uh, pretty much a Disney uh, princess type of thing. It's just the way any anime uh, fan becomes a fangirl of uh, whatever anime they sort of want to be part of. And she's already doing the dressing up, she's already doing the makeup, she's already doing got the hair and... And she has some ability to sew, sew the clothes, but the question is, is how much time is she willing to put into this? And so what happens, she can turn her room into sort of a, a Disney memorabilia thing. And then if she has some extra money from uh, her channel and so on and so forth, there's no reason why she can't spend more time at Disney and include those trips to Disney uh, as part of her, as part of her vlog, vlog your trip to Disney. Every time you go to Disney, let's say you got a season pass holder or a yearly pass, or annual pass holder, uh, uh, pass holder, uh, why not uh, simply go more often and include this as part of your vlog? A lot of people love watching these travel vlogs. Uh, so 
is not necessarily a bad thing to do this, uh, or, 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 or maybe, well, it's, it's overdoing it. People have seen this already, but, but some people like seeing it. It depends on, sorry, it depends on how you narrate things. It's the storytelling, the, the conversation that you have that really sort of brings people into a particular vlog, uh, and in, the, in most cases keeps them there. Uh, sometimes the conversation is there, sometimes not, con the, conversa the conversation is not there. That's what I'm sort of seeing with, uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with Carly, she's getting more comfortable in front of the camera. She's more relaxed in front of the camera. And, and, and in many cases, she's being more herself in front of the camera. In other words, the camera, she, it, people have a tendency to be camera shy where they don't say anything or they don't know what to say. And, you know, the camera light turns on or, well, this doesn't learn to light turns on. But in terms of other cameras, you'll see the camera light go on, it goes red, and oh, all of a sudden you're staring at the red button or you're staring, oh, or staring at the lens. And anything you thought of saying in terms of conversation is now gone. There is, so there is that sort of uh, initial, just a minute, i gotta, I got to pick this up. Be back in a minute. Well, that was the uh, telemarketer calling. So I thought it was the delivery for um, for Amazon. So we will be having a package opening uh, very soon. It says it's supposed to be here uh, by two thirty. So we'll see what ends up happening in terms of actual delivery time. So uh, I think it's going to be it for now. My mind is going. Well, well, no, I was talking about uh, Carly Reese and how she, her vlog, she's doing something called uh, uh, "Eat with Me," and it's basically it's it's another style of video, another style of conversation where she asks these deep questions and sort of gives her own opinion on these things, and also has her friends with it, and it's the sort of the candid nature of the uh, the vlog that really sort of pulls a person in and keeps them there. And it's one of, it was, it was people's, one of people's, uh, in terms of her fans, uh, well, it's one of the favorites. Uh, I like, and this is, I think it's because there is more of a conversation there. Although sometimes some of the rapport she has with her mom when she's out shopping and stuff like that, some of the, the, the sort of the, of the, the unscripted comments that would not necessarily not necessarily one well, would consider to be entertaining is sufficiently entertaining because you get to sort of see the natural interaction between her mom and her, and this is this is what you know our family and us initially started off with just uh, uh, her mom and uh, and her. Everyone else was kind of asked after the, the vlog got really popular. That's when the others started being added in, and so it was always primarily. Uh, the the um, our family knows was always primarily uh, Carly and her mom. So uh, her mom did the filming. That's can her name is Candy, and so uh, this is you see the evolution from someone who started off in childhood uh, <clears throat> as a vlogger in many ways, uh, and now has become a vlogger in her own right. So she's developed into. Uh, <clears throat> the vlogging environment, and this is something that Allie has to learn how to do, is how to become a vlogger. She has to learn how to develop her channel. She's got enough of a fan base there that, that it's worthwhile doing this. Uh, because it, once you've got a good enough fan base, but it, particularly if you're monetized, then you can do, you can actually make pretty good money at this. And my issue here isn't about money. My issue is about uh, research, and these are my research notes. Providing enough background so that when someone comes in, see, looks at, uh, asks the question, well, who I am? How did I get to know what I know? And then ask the questions that I do in terms of the deep analysis. Well, well, here it is. Here, here's all the stuff I think about. Here's how I, here I come, here, I, here's how I get to my ideas. These are my notes. These are my, uh, you know, the, my sort of droppings on the, in, on the internet in terms of, uh, um, what my notes would look like, what my studying air looks like, what my research desk look like, <clears throat> what what my research desk looks like. I don't have to watch my slurring of the words because uh, it is an issue. 
And the thing is, is that you have to define why you're on YouTube. You have to have some particular purpose. Uh, Clint is, is now going, is, is gone back to weekly. He was trying daily before in terms of daily vlogging, but it wasn't working out too well. So now he's gone back to about a weekly post. And he's doing it to fulfill his ob obligation with YouTube as a YouTube partner to keep his partnership. Uh, because he's primarily on Twitch now. Uh, again, it's a, it's a shift in style, a shift in reality. Uh, I tried Twitch, but it, Twitch, Twitch wasn't for me. <clears throat> you have to have enough content. Some, you have to have enough content to draw people in. And then to keep them there. I don't know if the conversation is long enough to keep people in on a live stream. And this is something that's sort of difficult to do. Uh, you see that uh, Lionel has the same issue with his live streams. Sometimes, so at some point in time, he runs out of things to talk about. And there's nothing to say. You have to repeat yourself. But this is kind of the way things go. And as I said, my new off-branch now is I'm looking at Twitter. I'm looking at TikTok. And, uh, and the Instagram reels, and it's just unbelievable. The people don't realize the situation that is evolving, the situation that is occurring. And there are many people who are applauding what's going on until, of course, they get into problems. They get into areas where they can't buy food anymore uh, and end up at a food bank, and then they're complaining. So a lot of times, issues are issues for other people until it hits me. So, that's kind of the way things go. And, uh, anyways, uh, back to, uh, what I was initially doing. And that's sort of, uh, just doing my meditation while I'm waiting for, uh, the, uh, the deliveries. We are Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life.